What made you realize you have horrible friends? We were a group of four girls. Susan and I had been friends since we were nine. Kirsten and I met when we started secondary school. Haley kind of trailed around after Kirsten. Kirsten and I seemed to really get along initially, although her family was a lot more well-off than mine, and she could be really pushy sometimes. Kirsten and I were really close friends as long as nobody else was around. If other people were around, she'd be dismissive of me, talk over me, make fun of me, contradict me constantly, and humiliate me. She'd bring up things I told her in confidence and make fun of me for them in front of other people. I came from a really emotionally manipulative family background and had no emotional tools to deal with that, so I just went with it. I didn't think I had a choice. I thought that maybe if I laughed along with her, maybe if I was cool enough, she'd stop and we'd become proper friends. Yeah, I know. By the time we'd all been friends for a couple of years, the others had joined Kirsten in going after me a lot of the time. It seemed to be the thing Kirsten bonded with other people over. We'd all go over to Kirsten's house for makeovers and they'd do each other's makeup and hair. But when it came to my turn, they'd just smear stuff all over my face and spray black spray in hair color all over my head. I still didn't have the guts to tell them to go, but I started to drift away. I spent more and more time alone, sat alone in classes as often as I could get away with it, would hide myself away at recess, and stopped eating lunch so that I wouldn't have to go through the lunch hall and risk being tracked down. They had very definitely started to bully and isolate me much more openly, but then, out of the blue, they invited me to meet them in town on my 14th birthday and go shopping with them. I agreed, but then just didn't go. This was before mobiles, and I just didn't answer the house phone all day. I decided I'd tell them that I forgot all about it when they cornered me in school, but then when I went to school on Monday, none of them even mentioned it. I discovered from someone else in the year who had a little sympathy for me that what they'd actually done was wait behind a wall on the route from my home in town with a pillowcase, eggs, flour, and permanent markers. The three of them were going to jump out, tie the pillowcase over my head, drag me into the woods, egg me, cover me with flour, and then draw on me with permanent marker. Apparently, they'd been boasting about this hilarious prank they'd planned for other people at my school and actually only gave up when they jumped out on the wrong person, some younger kid, and started to get scared that they might get into trouble. They knew I'd never get them in trouble because if I went home covered in eggs and permanent marker, they knew my parents would just blame me. They never tried another stunt like that one, and the other two eventually distanced themselves from Kirsten, but she continued to be an unrelenting bully to me on every possible occasion, until the day she finally moved away when we were 17. I was young and dumb and emotionally damaged, but I still can't get over how absolutely evil you have to be. Not just to think that that was an acceptable thing to do to someone, but to actually go and put a couple of hours into trying to do it and manipulate other people into doing it too. Story 2. Mom and I took in one of my friends a while back when I was around 18. Most of this is in hindsight. She made plans with a mutual friend right in front of me and didn't invite me. I had to invite myself. I'd be taking a while to get ready and she'd say, we'll come back for you in a bit, but I'd never come back. She did this so many damn times that it made me start not to trust her. When she didn't have a phone of her own, she'd always use mine to the extent that she started giving all her friends, who I didn't know, my phone number. When we got into a fight and after we made up, I learned she was referring to me as the monster. I was able to laugh about it at the time, but now I don't think it was funny at all. I found a list she'd made of her friends and I noticed I wasn't on it. This royally pissed me off at the time because, as I mentioned above, mom and I had let her live with us. How that doesn't make me a friend is anyone's guess. Since it's been a while since I started speaking up for myself, I never said anything to her about this. This is what made me realize she was a crappy friend. We'd fought again and I ended the friendship because I was just fed up with her. She randomly dropped by my house and told me she was meeting with a friend and his buddy who were in town. She invited me to go with her. I didn't have anything planned, so I went. I should have noticed something was up when she told me not to post about it on Facebook since she had a boyfriend at the time. She ended up cheating on him that night with her friend. Me and my buddy just talked. We all shared a room, so I tossed an empty beer can at them when the noises started getting on my last nerve. In my hometown, we have both a city called Milwaukee and a street called Milwaukee. I was living just off Milwaukee Street at the time. The next morning, my ex-friend and her side piece were going to drop me off at Milwaukee. I asked just to make sure that it was Milwaukee Street, not Milwaukee City, since I'd never been to the latter and wanted to make sure I'd get home. 
The ex-friend made weird noises while hitting her chest with her hand and said, Yes, Milwaukee Street. Jesus, dude, I don't want to get lost. I had to address my knowledge of her cheating with my therapist because her boyfriend seemed like a nice guy and I wanted to tell him about what she did, but I still wasn't sure if I should. Lucky for me, her boyfriend found out about the affair. I know this because she posted some BS about how sorry she is. I call this BS because I'd heard her say she loves him, but when I asked her about what she was doing, she said, Oh, we're only technically dating. When you're dropping I love you, there's nothing technical about it. Anyway, the witch is out of my life now, and I'm happier for it. Story 3 When she and her mom went on an hour-long rant about how black people are only disproportionately poor because they're lazy, I wanted to jump out of the moving car. When I tried to argue, my friend told me I should teach at the majority black high school she taught at for a year, and then I could have an opinion. Apparently, the fact that I had been teaching at a racially diverse college for a year didn't matter. It made me think of all the many other times she had told me I couldn't have an opinion on an issue because I hadn't experienced it. Something specific and completely unnecessary to understanding the topic, either that she has experienced and I haven't, or that very few people ever do. I get it, she was lashing out because her students at that majority black school were mean to her every day, but that's probably because she unknowingly said something that clued them into her discrimination. She used to loudly complain about lazy Mexicans during lunch in our majority Latino high school. I thought she would grow out of it someday, she just grew more hateful. But it got worse after that argument. When I told her by text later that I was upset with her and wanted some time to myself, she came into my house, physically cornered me against my bedroom door, forcibly hugged me, and ranted some more and refused to leave until I promised to come get pedicures with her and our mutual friend, who was super conservative and agreed with her on almost everything, to talk about this issue some more. I promised just to make her leave and I canceled the pedicure the next day. Three weeks later, we had our last conversation. She spent the first half of it acting like she had every right to be upset but I had no right, setting up new ground rules for me, half of which she had broken when the fight started. She spent the second half of the conversation acting like everything was fine. Now that she had put me in my place, she could move on and that was all that mattered. I smiled, nodded, and said what she wanted to hear. I had already decided to cut her out. We've never exchanged a word since. Ten years of friendship have gone by since the day I realized that A, she was prejudiced, and B, my opinions had never mattered to her. Happy to hear you're free, OP. A whole decade of peace from and fake friends. Ain't that a relief? Let's go ahead and move on to the next story. This is story four. My best friend had some really bad luck. Two bad car accidents in nine months, the second totaled his beloved crappy Mustang. Understandably, this made his financial problems worse. He had just moved into a smaller house with most of his family, and a lot of repairs needed to be done cheaply. The house wasn't too bad because his giant Mexican family has a dozen tradesmen. He needed help putting up a fence. I already had all the supplies and everything laid out. We just needed post holes dug, sections lifted, cement mix poured, and measurements after, so we know we did it right. Now, it's worth mentioning that almost every one of our mutual friends is in the trade or imbibes. Mostly grass, but occasionally other things. This is important because another type of substance was really big around here for a time. We live in the suburbs of Atlantic City. So about a year before this, his childhood friend, who I'll call Andy, was into the stuff. It came to light after he was cut off, and we all agreed. We did it like three times together in total, then promptly went back to grass, so this came as a big surprise. Spiraled out of control from there. Andy was living with my best friend at the time and left everything and both of his jobs after a series of arguments. I'm omitting a fair amount, but neither of their hands were clean. My friend wasn't picking up his phone the day before, so I just showed up. Not only was Andy the only other person to show up, he'd gotten there two hours before me. Radio silence from everyone else. The fence still holds fine, and we were eventually paid in ribs. Story 5. One time I drove 11 hours one way in a rented car to visit an old friend from high school for a weekend. We had always stayed in touch. The plan was to see a show that Saturday. I arrived Friday evening. Saturday morning, he got super tipsy, then let me know that the show we were seeing was two hours away, and I had to drive because he was already intoxicated. I was like, damn it, fine. He purchased the tickets for the show. I ended up getting us guest listed at the last second, and this guy told me I needed to pay for the ticket he bought me since I got us in for free. I spent $150 on a rental car and at least $200 on gas for the round trip. 
but it was imperative that I pay him the $20 back for my ticket to that show. Oh, and right before I arrived for the weekend, he let me know, I'm 30 minutes out, mind you, that he broke up with his living girlfriend, so things might be awkward. He also took over my fantasy football team the last week of the season because he didn't like my lineup and needed me to win in order for him to make the playoffs. I haven't talked to him in a while. Are these stories making you appreciate your own friends a little bit more? I know they are for me. Smash that like button and subscribe to join me in discovering more unbelievable tales because they're going to get better than this. Here's story six. Not horrible exactly, but pretty crappy. I have two friends that constantly feel the need to make comments on my eczema. I have no clue why they feel this is acceptable behavior in any capacity. One of them is a guy who always insists on shaking hands whenever I see him. Most of the time, my eczema isn't very noticeable, but other days, I just get a bad break and my hands get quite dry. I'm somewhat self-conscious about it as it's just all around uncomfortable for me, and it's not like I can just use lotion to make it go away instantly. Every time we shake hands, he's always saying something like, OMG, they're so dry, you really need some lotion. Or, wow, you've got some man hands on you. I'm a girl. Like, seriously, why? Even if you didn't know I have eczema, when is it ever okay to comment on someone's skin? The other friend is a girl I've known since high school. She always makes comments about my eczema, even though she also gets patches of it from time to time. I can remember her saying how gross it was or how I spread it to her from time to time. The instance that really stood out to me was when she was having a particularly bad outbreak and told me about it. I gave her some advice to alleviate it, something along the lines of putting ointment on it and then wrapping it in saran wrap or some cloth before bed. I specifically told her I do this myself and it works practically overnight. She responded with, I'm not going to do that, I don't want to feel like a child and gave me this incredulous look while she rolled her eyes at me. I don't think they mean it maliciously but I don't really care for hanging out with either of these people anymore and the only reason they're still around is primarily because they're friends of friends. I really appreciate my actual friends who never make it an issue and sometimes even take it upon themselves to help me with it, even just subtle things like holding my hand when they notice me absentmindedly scratching. Story 7. I've had many horrible friends. One woman stands out. She was a proud deviant who had a few official boyfriends during the few years that I knew her. She cheated on every single partner she ever had. She was cheating on each one of the boyfriends that I was acquainted with, with at least six other guys, and using me as an alibi. First without my knowledge, then without my permission. Looking back, I should have told her boyfriend, especially the last one whom she wound up bullying into marrying her. She was a greedy woman, probably a sociopath. I should have gone to the police when she first started to do things and even more so when she sprayed strong perfume all over my toddler's face and hair on a stupid whim, but I was afraid of her. She was a hairdresser and would cut my hair for cheap. The last time she ever cut my hair, she ruined it on purpose and shaved a 2 euro size patch in the back of my scalp. She was just a cruel person. When I realized what she'd done, I told her to get out of my house. We haven't seen or spoken to one another in years. She's still married to that last guy she took a liking to, and they have a son together, if the child is even his. I've heard all kinds of rumors. That was the last truly bad friendship I had, which made me stop ignoring red flags when I saw them. She was a complete and utter narcissist and took advantage of me in all kinds of ways. Sometimes I consider messaging her husband on Facebook and telling him a few things that I should have told him before he married her. Story 8 I had been extremely close with these three girls. They were related and their family essentially adopted me since my freshman year of high school. We'll call them Anna, Jesse, and Mary. We graduated together and remained friends and after a rough divorce, I moved in with Anna and Jesse. They were disgusting roommates, but I just continued to clean up after myself and tried to be an adult about the whole situation. After over a year in this situation and still doing what I could do to be a good friend and maintain these relationships, Jesse decided to be hateful towards Mary in our group text message. They had had an argument in this message thread and Jesse was in the wrong, but she still called Mary every name in the book and basically lost her mind at her. I didn't want to just sit by and watch, so I told Jesse to knock it off and stop being a bully to Mary. Jesse proceeded to tell me to go and she spent the next week giving me the silent treatment and slamming doors whenever I was around. In the background, Anna, Mary, and Jesse started having secret meetings where it was decided that I was the crappy person, not Jesse, 
and that as punishment, Anna and Jesse were going to stop paying so much rent and instead make me start paying more. I was living in the smallest bedroom in this house and they wanted me to start paying half the rent, all because I stuck up for my friend. Furthermore, Jesse convinced Mary, you know, the person she was straight up a-hole to before, that I only stood up for her to use her as a crutch so that I could start something with Jesse. Luckily, after we had been on our lease for a full year, I had the option of giving the landlord 30 days notice before I moved out. I had to find this out by requesting a copy of the lease from our landlord because Anna and Jesse wouldn't let me see our original copy. Anna and Jesse were too stupid to read the first page of the lease and realize that I had an out. So I packed in secret and moved out with absolutely zero notice to them. I wish I could have been a fly on the wall in that house when they found my room empty. I'm happy to be free from those toxic relationships, but I really miss the rest of their family. Well, that's one way to go and a vengeful one at that, but in this case, two thumbs up for you, OP. Story 9. When they yelled at me for inviting a girl I knew to our house party in college, they hated her, apparently, and when I asked the reason, she said she's always flaunting her chest, showing off, and just thought she was a wild person. First of all, there's no way to cover it up when wearing just a plain t-shirt. It's not like they were falling out. Second, they had only met her in passing a couple of times, so they had made up the fact that she was wild. Third, I lived in that house and threw my money down to help host the party, so I can invite whoever I want to. If they didn't like her, they could have gone and talked to the literal 70-something people that showed up. They were the type of girls who wanted to be the queen bee of their high school, and were now trying to do that in college. College is different. There isn't a queen bee, so if I get sick of your BS, I can go find friends amongst the 15,000 students at my university. After that year in the house, I started putting serious distance between myself and them, which made them all irate. Two of the girls messaged every single person on my Facebook to inform them that I was dirty and sick. Pretty much everyone messaged me with screenshots, didn't believe them, and then thought these people that they barely even knew were bratty children. I told them the truth. I was extracting myself from the friend group and they were angry about it. I made a ton more friends by doing that because those that did know them responded to me with an invitation to do something because, oh good, you aren't friends with them anymore? They're all a-holes. Want to go to a party on Friday? Story 10. One girl from my high school went to the same university I did. We weren't really friends. We ran in different circles and barely knew each other. But she was very much the popular girl at school and all of a sudden she was without her little clique and I think she felt a little surprised that her high school popularity didn't really transfer to university where a lot of people seemed to recognize that she was toxic. I actually managed to make some pretty good friends in the first couple of months and suddenly this girl decided that she'd be best pals with me and get in with my group like we'd been friends for years. The short version, over the course of about six months, she managed to convince my friends that I wasn't worth being friends with and that I'd done some terrible things when I was in high school. A blatant lie, I wasn't really popular enough to do any kind of thing in high school. By the end of the first year, they decided that they didn't want to live with me, so I entered my second year pretty much without friends, with no firm place to live and having to start afresh with all these rumors about me floating around. It was some real mean girls BS and I started to see that all of the friends I'd made were a little too willing to engage in that sort of gossip as long as they weren't at the bottom of the pecking order. As soon as the opportunity arose to boost their own standing by taking it out on someone they perceived to be weaker, they were all over it. In a happier coda, I had a miserable second year and then made a much nicer group of friends which I'm still super close to today so never mind them. Alright, as we wrap up today's video, remember that it's okay to outgo friendships that no longer serve you, especially if they're mean to you. Your mental, our mental, and emotional well-being should always come first. Now, if you resonated with these crazy stories, please do consider watching the next one. Why did you nope out of a friendship? Story 3 is actually pretty scary. I'll see you there, and thank you for watching this one.